there, I think that I would, I, I would be cautious to use the feminist movement in China because uh, uh, it is still a sensitive topic. The government doesn't like a feminist movement. And also movements suggest a large number of participants. There is a, a movement of some sort and also there's um, quite, not now, quite a few years ago, uh, beginning starting from 2012, uh, China, we saw uh, uh, increased feminist activism. <clears throat> on, in that year, um, 2012, on the um, uh, 14th of uh, February, on Valentine's Day in 2012, three young women, three young feminists, went to the street to protest. They dressed up with wedding gowns, uh, splattered with fake blood. They were protesting against domestic violence. So ever since then, there were, there were other similar um, activities, or sometimes they call, they call them performance, because it, the protest uh, is a sensitive word in China. You know, in China, still authoritarian society, the government doesn't allow protest. So they call that a performance. So there were some similar performance, for example, women queued up in front of the toilet to protest against the shortage of female toilets. And um, another group of women shaved off their hair to protest against um, um, unfair treatment of women. And in some university, women to have to enter they have to, to be accepted, they have to uh, score a higher uh, score in order, in order to be uh, accepted. Uh, in some other places, women protest against um, unfair uh, discrimination against employment. So, but uh, in, ever since Xi Jinping came to power, the activism has, there has been cracked down. Um, in 2015, on, March, um, the day before International Women's Day, on March 7th, just the day before International Women's Day, and some, a group of young women, five women, wanted to organize uh, a protest on the International Women's Day to protest against sexual harassment um, on public transport, but they were arrested and they were detained for some time, for less than two months, and it caused an international outcry. They were released but uh, they were released, but they were now they're still being monitored. So that's a crackdown against um, feminist activism. And the Me Too movement, there's also a Me Too movement in China. So it did not, when the Me Too movement happened, you know, the other you know, women from other parts world responded almost immediately. In China, it took some time. So I think in the beginning, um, it first started, the, it kicked off in the beginning, in January 2018, when uh, a young woman uh, wrote a blog post um, exposing how she had been sexually harassed by her professor, who made uh, unwanted sexual advancement. And so ever since then, other women who also uh, stood out and uh, exposed similar cases. Um, like, even though the, that professor was uh, kind of a disgraced, but uh, the government doesn't like this kind of uh, expose. So, so there's a, a women found other ways to get their voice heard, to oppose sexual harassment um, and such things. But generally speaking, the, the political atmosphere has been tightened. So there is a Me Too movement and feminist movement as well, but uh, it would have been much bigger if without the authorities' control. And the communication media um, support this uh, performance and this activism, or the um, communication media are also controlled? By controlled. The it's a con it's a, it's a controlled, yes, but uh, sometimes women find another way to get their voice heard. For example, Me Too movement. That to, to, if, if you say Me Too, right, in English or Chinese, 我也是, 
they will be censored. So the woman found an uh, interesting way to say, me too, they caught a um, rice rabbit, because of me, that's also me too. Rice rabbit in Chinese, me too, which sounds the same as, as me too. So in this way, they can uh, get away from the censorship. Um, women are doing very well in uh, business in the w in the world. Uh, among the top ten self-made women, half come from China. But uh, women are not doing great in terms of uh, female, uh, in terms of uh, political participation, especially a uh, uh, very low end and a high end. Um, my sister, she works for uh, a gov government. She was the deputy head of one large district in Nanjing, hometown. And there are quite a lot of people, women like her, but the higher level you go, less women you see. So, for example, we have the National People's Congress, like China's parliament. Um, uh, the percentage about 22% are women. The standing committee, about 15.8% are women. And then the next level, we have two women, uh, ministers and the standing committee or boys club no women so the higher you go less women uh, birth control right is family planning yes yes uh, family planning has been relaxed uh, we introduced this uh, family planning but in the china has opposite problem um, so and, uh, in 2016, China re relaxed the family planning. So in this, uh, you can have uh, you can have second child if you wish. But not many, not many people take up the offer. In the city, the, the cost is really high, and the women, some women, um, they don't want second second child. Uh, it's very expensive. They are busy. They want to do something for themselves. And some women even choose not to have children. Right, so there are two big questions here. Maybe I, sh I should answer the second question. Why uh, I want to, wanted to write a book about prostitution? Um, because of my grandmother. And 20 years ago, um, right in front of my grandma's deathbed, I learned a long-kept family secret that my grandmother was uh, a sex worker. I was uh, shocked. Um, I guess you don't associate uh, your grandma with, um, with uh, a prostitute. And especially my grandmother was a very special person and she brought us up. Because my mother, she had a full-time job, she was a factory worker. She, after each birth, she went back to work. So my, my father lived in another city. Um, so my grandmother brought us up and she cooked for us. And, um, so I was very shocked and my mother explained that uh, my grandmother was become an orphan and her parents, both of her parents died in a famine and then she was adopted by her aunt family and when she uh, blossomed uh, into a beautiful young woman at 14, um, her aunt husband sold her into a brothel. I mean in those days the women were sold like a common commodity. So I was really uh, surprised and then my, so my mother explained why and uh, so my, my grandmother worked at uh, a brothel for 10 years where she met my grandfather and he bought her out and uh, installed her as a concubine. And so in 1949 when the Chinese Communist Party took over they ordered the men men were, could only have one wife so um, my grandfather decided to stay with my grandmother um, so anyway ever since then I become very interested in prostitution because I kept wondering how my grandmother coped what her life was like as a prostitute and then just interestingly, just a few months after that, I went to Shenzhen. I walked, by the way, I walked uh, 
for many years as a freelance journalist. So I went to Shenzhen on a reporting trip. And one day um, I went to a uh, massage parlor. Uh, I wanted to get my hair cut. So my hair cut, look, inspired by King Jong Un. <laughs> so um, anyway, the, there was a few girls that were, they were giggling. I said, I want to have my hair cut. They said they didn't know how to cut their hair. And then they, the girls was wearing a very showy dress, a short, short dress. And I looked down the floor. Um, there was no hair shaving. And suddenly it occurred to me what kind of establishment it was. You know, uh, prostitution is illegal in China. So many, you know, they use um, massage parlor, uh, fa facial massage and this kind of place, uh, beauty saloon as the front um, for Brussels. So I chatted with the girls and learned that they were all uh, migrant workers from poor hinterland of China and they left the village looking for a better life in the city. Uh, quite a few of them worked at on the production line. But production line was really, you know, life was tough and the salary was very low. And one of them friends got a job um, as a massage parlor and a health saloon. And the pay was much better, life was easier, so that's how they uh, follow the suit. So I just thought it was, mm, you know, compare them with my grandmother, you know, how um, how they become a, 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 become, took that leap to become a prostitute. And so they told me their life story and I was very interested and I thought maybe I can, yeah, so the book Lota, it's a, it's a book of, um, it's, it's, a book, it's a story about young woman's life, but also it's a book about social tension because prostitution, I think it's a very interesting window to see how China has changed because uh, prostitution touches upon some most uh, important aspect of our society like urbanization, modernization, um, a rural-urban divide. You know, the China experience saw massive migration as people left the village to live in the city and the income gap between rural, uh, between men and women and also the kind of the battle the tug of war between tradition and modernity which is why I wanted to write a book about prostitution um, and why I chose Shenzhen? Because this, when I first um, met those uh, sex workers, it was in Shenzhen, and uh, in, also in Shenzhen there were there are lots of uh, sex workers. Um, prostitution, I, I should say, exists and has become a massive industry. And in every city in China, there's probably a red light district, even though it's not marked. If you ask taxi driver, they always know where to go. Um, um, I think, but in the more developed area, there's more prostitution is more developed. Um, and in Shenzhen, there's also lots of arnai, they're called second, uh, second wives, or concubine, modern version of second concubine. Shenzhen is a very prosperous town just across the border from Hong Kong. So some businessmen from Hong Kong, they keep uh, concubines, keep women mistress in uh, Shenzhen. And another reason is that uh, I want to use in prostitution uh, to see how China has changed and how, because um, Shenzhen is the place China first, China, China's first special economic zone is in Shenzhen. So this is a place Chinese leaders use to experiment with capitalism. So this book to impact how see the China, the market economy changed China.